Hey everyone, my name is Genevieve and I'm going to give you an energy update on how I'm experiencing the collective consciousness and mother's consciousness, um, which will also touch on my psilocybin experience this week. I am a Gnostic and I do consider myself a high priestess because I make it my business and my life's purpose to engage with mother's consciousness and to um, use that information, that light, to continue growing in my own enlightenment and to share the wisdom that she gives me with this lens. I'm sitting here in front of this fireplace, which was very skillfully patched up with some foil by somebody who works here, because this is where I sat for my whole psilocybin experience. And if anybody's done plant medicine, you know that it's quite hard to put into words what is the, the experiences that are given to you. But I'm going to try. I'm going to try and do that. But it all comes down to this. This is my body that was broken open for you. So that you might have life. From the Gnostic perspective... When Christ or Jesus Christ says that because many have attained Christhood. When he says that, he's not talking about himself, but he's talking about her, the great mother. I'm going to just give a little bit of a background here before I get into my psilocybin uh, experience with her. In the Gnostic teachings, the goddess Sophia and the god Thelit are two serpentine energies, aeons, generators. There are maybe around 36 generators at the galactic core. The number is debatable. Um, and they are in unity together, these two serpent energies, Sophia and Thelit, in a unified bliss of creation. Um, and I do really recommend going to look at the work of Professor John Lamb Lash, who is a living Merlin, in my opinion, and he deserves the Nobel Peace Prize for combing through the Nahamadi texts and all the Gnostic codices to retrieve the fallen goddess scenario, the Sophianic myth um, that was repressed for many, many years on purpose and is the reason that we have a distortion in the Abrahamic texts. So in all other, other mythologies, you have this understanding that there is a polarity, there is a male and a female aspect to um, the God energy, right? And within each of us. And to bring those into a unified flow together is to attain unity and enlightenment as a human. But when you take the understanding out like, like has been taken out of the um, Abrahamic texts because of the Hiburu file or the Hiburu mythology, which is an anomaly in terms of all other mythologies, in terms of it being an, a monotheistic male understanding. You definitely do take away the ability for the human that follows that mythology to attain unity. Because without the understanding of duality, we cannot attain unity. So in the Gnostic texts, and please go look at sophianicmyth.org and nemeter.org, which is John Lamb Lash's um, school of Gnostic wisdom. He's a living Gnostic teacher and the greatest teacher alive today, in my opinion, um, where you can get a lot more detail about what I'm saying to you. But Sophia and Thelit were... They, you know, the, the Chinese will say uh, sky dragons, the Indians will say the Nagas. So there's different words and different cultures for these very big serpentine energies. They're in unity together and creating. And they had created Anthropos, or so the human. And when they were looking down at that, that arm of the galaxy, they were seeing that the nine versions of Anthropos, this is all in Gnostic scripture that predates the Bible, um, had failed, they had gone awry. And Sophia, the goddess um, aspect, the female aspect of this entwined serpentine unity, couldn't take her eye off it. She was so in love with her creation and she couldn't understand why it kept failing. 
And from that innate desire to heal or love or resolve the issue, she put, it's a long story, so go look at John Lamlash's uh, Retrieval of the Scriptures, but she uh, essentially falls into and comes down into the plane, this plane, and becomes the earth. She becomes Gaia. She in involves herself, this great mystery, this great consciousness involves herself with her own creation out of love because she wanted to ensure that Anthropos 10 the next version of humanity, would be able to attain and hold its power without going awry. So out of love, she immersed herself in our experience. So we are, are a quite a novelty in the universe in terms of having the aeon, the generator, the generating power, the aeon, involved and innately part of us and earth and each one of us she is everything um it's a very special circumstance and it's the greatest act of love that is the great act of love that jesus is talking about that is the great body that was broken in two that he is talking about she pulled herself away from thalit her counter she broke her body open so that she could come here and immerse herself, become the earth, the creatrix, in order for us to move through time, through many cycles, so that we could come to enlightenment and be able to hold that enlightenment and attain it without going awry. She had understood that there, there needed to be another aspect to the experiment or the design in order for us to become um, and hold our power with love and wisdom. She had almost given us that in the experiment, the first nine versions, and we were, were given it too freely, so we didn't understand how to use it. So out of her own agency, she immersed herself here. She is a consciousness. The earth is conscious. And it's her. It's Sophia. She is a goddess. She is alive. And I just, I kept seeing this, um, many things in my experience. But every single thing, everything, everything that we eat is broken open. Every piece of bread is broken open. It's her body that sustains us. It's her wisdom that sustains us. Um, and when I, I um, was in a very deep part of my psilocybin experience, I would close my eyes. And last year when I had an experience, I went inside a blue, almost like a blue fractal. But the, the, it was like diamond shapes, like almost like a snake skin, the diamond of a snake skin bright blue and inside each diamond was an eye and I was traveling through it, it was electric blue um, and I was filled with elation last year when I when I did my ceremony, my holy communion um, and I want to just just a little side mention as well that this, the sacred mushroom is embedded in a lot of Christian art as um, the, the fruit that Eve gives Adam because holy communion is a living experience. It's not a dry piece of bread or a wafer in the Gnostic understanding. I mean, that's fine to do as a ritual to, to give thanks, but that's not what Jesus did. Jesus took uh, psilocybin and he was illuminated by her living consciousness. That is the wafer. It's a sacred mushroom. Um, and I was almost a bit too afraid this time to even take the mushroom because I knew the spider had been visiting me and the spider is very paradoxical. I knew I wasn't going to have this elated bounding experience like I had last time. I knew that the mother wanted to show me the depths of her and I was a little bit afraid to see that. So I sat here in front of this fire um, in, uh, 
in the Zen meditation position with the Buddha Mudra. Just trying to hold it, um, but I would slip. I was coming, uh, anyway, so I went into quite a lot of traveling into, I went and I saw these, every time I closed my eyes, I saw the serpentine energy, layers of just almost if you imagine reeds and twigs and just serpentine and each I could see the diamonds on each one of those right and inside each diamond was the eye right everywhere everywhere I looked I could see it when I opened my eyes I could see it I looked at fruit and I could see the very nature of it it's almost like I could see to the atomic and there was an eye inside each of each scale of it and that is the all-seeing eye Horus right there is this all-seeing eye above, Thalit. She had wrenched herself from her lover. He became the sky, Father Sky, and she became Mother Earth. And there is that all-seeing eye above, and she is the all-seeing eye below, immersed in every fiber of our reality. And she is there watching and holding and coming through with us through every single age. She has immersed herself here as a loving mother. Like a mom, you would see a mom on earth watch her kid constantly. Oh, is it going too close to that? I don't want it to trip over there. She has done that. That is a microcosm of what this great mother, Sophia, has done here on the earth plane. And between all these eyes that I could see, as I was having this understanding of her, I could see um, red and blue dots, um, which lines up with the understanding of the sky dragons, or even within each of our bodies. We have serpentine energy, we have the masculine and the feminine, and they're codified by red and blue. And this comes up in a lot of mythologies, all mythologies, in fact, except the Hebrew one. Um, and it comes down to the atomic, the proton and the electron. So she, Felita and Sophia, up in the Pleroma, she wrenched her body apart. She became polarity in order for us to find our unity. She was the great sacrifice. It's her body that is broken open for us daily. That big act, of course, over many cycles that we can't even fathom, she sits and she waits and she watches and she weaves. The spider weaves her story. And every 26,000 years, this lines up um, with many ancient calendar systems like the Mayan one, like the one we're in right now. We're coming into this ascension age astrologically. And the West has been um, sort of throttled by the Gregorian calendar system, which was instituted, I think, in 1582. Funnily enough, when the Renaissance was happening, right, this rebirth of true knowledge, ancient wisdom, you get the empire bringing in the Gregorian calendar to um, hold us down with a false sense of time. But what she showed me is that she is patiently weaving her story like the spider weaves a web delicately. delicately. She had this beautiful song that she brought to me as well. It's, it's almost about, a bit like Portuguese Fado music, which is quite sorrowful but beautiful and she waits with all these emotions and she sings and she waits and she waits and as these cycles come these ascension times she opens up her story again her sacred story and those children of hers us all here on the earth that wish to immerse ourselves in her wisdom and her story and come into enlightenment and step into another paradigm we do so and those that choose not to, she has already designed it so that in another time when um, she weaves her web and the cycles come into alignment again, she will bring those souls and that, those conscious beings up. She is here like a mother. When, when Jesus talks about every last uh, sheep, that parable, going out to find every last one, that's her. And that's this whole story that she has immersed herself into. And I was getting so frustrated with people that couldn't see the truth. And she, she pulled my chin up to her. There were these, I was having this deep communion with her and she was um, quite fierce. And she was saying to me, why are you angry with them? Is that your anger? 
Is that your pain? I was like, I suppose, I suppose it isn't my pain. She was like, it's not, because it's not even my pain. I'm here immersed. I am the earth. I am every human experience. And it's still not my pain. So how dare you take it on as your pain? That's just an experience. I am the one here. I am Sophia. I am this goddess. I have created this paradigm, this earth. I am this earth. And I have a great plan that you can't possibly fathom. So if you want to go into pain and anger and separation, then go there. That is okay. And you will come up at another time. Because I have designed it so that every one of my children is elevated out of this paradigm. And this paradigm was created in order for you to find your own way out, in order for you to, over many cycles, in order for each one of us to bring ourselves out. And when we bring ourselves out and we've walked through so many incarnations, we then hold that power with the love and wisdom that it deserves. And then her anthropos, her experiment doesn't fail anymore. It's very wise. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's a kind of commitment that I can't even fathom. And I remember having had um, a few experiences before I took psilocybin. A couple of weeks ago, I came into a lucid experience where I was lying on a bed and one man was sitting on my legs and another man had my shoulders pinned down and I was completely immobilized and he was softly kissing my mouth. They were taking advantage of my body and I couldn't move. And I was brought back to that memory during my psilocybin experience and I was disgusted by them. And she made me, she turned my face to look deep. She kept pulling my face down to the right and I would go into the black of the scales, but there were still eyes and all the blackness. And she was saying to me that that is also her. She is all aspects of experience. Those men are her and that helpless woman lying there is her and all of it is her. And who am I? to moralize and to condemn any of it. Who am I if I want to hold on to pain or anger or the, the story of this life? That's what it is. She gave us experience. She gave us story. If I want to completely invest myself in these stories, then this is not the cycle in which I, I, I come out of it. But she is all of it and she gave us all of it so that we would find our way out. She made me look at the darkest parts of her and realize that those things that make me angry are her. It's all her. And she is the all-seeing eye everywhere, watching us, taking us through. She is the body that was broken open for us. Okay. I think I'm going to just leave it there. There's a lot more to be said, but I think that's the core message that I wanted to share. Um... But she's weaving a new story now. It's that time she has patiently been weaving her sacred thread through history um, of this truth. And many have carried this truth. When the Templars were interrogated and they admitted to worshipping Baphomet, which official history calls a demon, Baphomet is a code for Sophia. They worshipped her. The Gnostics worshipped her, the Essenes, the Nazarenes. 
they all had an understanding of this serpentine consciousness that is embedded in with us, is the all-seeing eye taking us through. And this truth has been purposefully annihilated because it's what liberates us. It's what takes us out of this construct, this matrix of subjugation, and into her creatrix. And she is now, if we go through these ages, where this knowledge just comes up because she weaves it as such. And this is what is happening now. We're in a 20s, we've come to this point in the mind calendar and all the ancient calendars. She is weaving the story. It's coming out. And she's doing it throughout all, of, all our consciousnesses who are willing to have it woven through us and to be elevated and to be taken into a new plane of understanding. And for me, those who do not wish to understand and who want to stay in places of shaming others and in places of controlling others and in places of separation, that's okay. And they are to be loved because they are her and she loves them and she will bring them up at another time. So... All is as it is, should be. And she's doing this very incredible thing now. We are going to see the ancient way and this wisdom rise up because she's doing that now. Okay. Sending so much love and much gratitude for the mother and every every bite of food I take now, every seed, everything, I see her. She is it. She is this. She is it. She is this piece of wood I break open to make a fire to keep warm. She is every taste, every experience is her. Her sacrifices. I kept crying about it during my experience, my psilocybin experience, because I was so overwhelmed with the sacrifice. And she kept saying to me, it's not, my, it's not a sacrifice. I wouldn't have it any other way. Don't you feel sorry for me? <laughs> I am Sophia. You can't fathom me. And I chose this. I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm a mother. I love you. And I will sit like a mountain, over eons of time, waiting, weaving, weaving. So each one of my beloveds finds their way home. What else would I do? I wouldn't have had it any other way. Okay. <sighs> blessed, blessed mother. So we are watched and we are protected. And all is as it should be. Okay, sending all the love 